What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And I'm very excited because today is the final week for the maintenance phase before starting contest prep. And of course, I'm looking very much forward this contest prep because it's the Arnold Classic UK under the guidance of Stefan Kinzel. So I just enjoyed my breakfast, still nice and high in carbs and calories because right now I'm maintaining, but once I'm in prep, we will go serious, lowering the carbs, lowering the calories to make sure we use the 16 weeks to prep to the Arnold Classic UK to make sure we are in incredible shape. So today's an arm day. The reason for that is I normally don't do a separate arm day, but at the same time, I don't mind it at all. I used to do separate arm days back in the day when I wanted bigger arms, but right now, apart from the triceps, they are pretty much you know, on par with my upper body. And when I mean on par, I mean classic physique on par because my biceps, in my opinion, need to be quite big to be considered true dominant classic for my physique. So. They are, but anyway, the arm workout is there because I want some extra rest in between the chest, the back and the legs and an extra arm day provides an extra day of rest for those muscle groups. So in the maintenance week, that's perfect to apply. And uh, yeah, so today's, that's gonna be it. And uh, I'm gonna go to the gym right now and see you there. Right here, I have a milligram scale. So this would be a regular kitchen scale. This only measures one gram with one gram accuracy, but this one measures until well, a thousandth of a gram accuracy. So one big topic of discussion in bodybuilding, at least you should discuss this, is the amount of salt you take each day. A lot of pre-workouts, they you know have some sodium on the back saying, hey, we added extra sodium from Himalayan pink salt 200 milligrams as if it's a lot but honestly i use a couple of grams in the workout like 2000 milligrams so we are going to measure this right here so first we're going to go with the dose that the pre-workout mentions and i know that salt and sodium actually not the same sodium is uh sodium chloride obviously but we're going to check okay so Right now it's 0 0.00 grams. And if we are going to put in exactly the amount, you see this is already above, this is already 300 milligrams of salt, only 300. And you saw how careful I had to be. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna go to zero. And this is about the amount I would add myself. So about, yeah, at least this amount. So you can see the difference right here. This is what is in a regular pre-workout or intra-workout. And this is the amount I like to take myself, more than three times the amount. And I'll be adding this into my intra-workout shakes. And I already added this into my pre-workout. So this is what I do every single day, instead of having to rely on you know, pump inducing intra workouts, pre workouts, the best thing you can do is add this on top of those things. So I'm gonna be creating the intra workout shake with some secret ingredients. Well, not so secret anymore because I'm showing it all the time. Pomegranate juice. I already showed you this a few times, but the amount of carbs here 14 grams per 100 ml. So I wanna put in about 40, 50 grams of carbs in here. So in both shaker cups, I'll be adding 250 mils of this. And we also need to work out in some clothing. I only have this t-shirt with me, but we're going to train arms and we do want to see the arms of course. So usually I have a backup right here of some vintage genetics clothing, like a golden era t-shirts and a few tank tops, but this is size large. And these already are pretty new sleeveless tank tops, my size 3XL, but even those are sometimes pretty tight, but we also have stringers like this, which give you all the freedom if you don't like tight clothing. So I'm wearing an oversized t-shirt right here, which is what I like 
And also this pretty much feels oversized as well because it's a stringer allowing for more freedom and showing and freeing up the muscles. So I'm about to sign a contract here and that means I am no longer with Jacked Factory. It's been an amazing time since last year, right before doing the Portugal Pro in Portugal, obviously, when I was there. Um, you know, I talked to Jack's Factory and ever since then it's been an amazing collaboration, I see it. Uh, obviously it was a sponsorship, but it's always like a team effort. Um, but along the way, you gotta take a next step towards what's best for your own interests. Best for your future, back then I only had one baby and now we're having two, of course. We, we got into a new house and you know, your life, your planning, everything changes and you have to make things a little more easy for yourself. Not easier in doing less effort, but actually making things more efficient. So uh, accompanying with and partnering with something more locally for me makes more sense. Uh, you know, my target audience is of course a lot of people in the USA, but also a lot of people in Europe. And I want to bridge that gap as I've been doing with my own vintagenetics.com website, which, you know, goes worldwide. I want to do the same with my next step. So a lot more about this, but it's time to put my name and signature on a, this one, on a, this contract. And just to be clear, I see moves like this as not moving away from someone, but actually moving on with your own ambitions, your own life, because my goal, as you guys know, is not only to be at the top of the Mr. Olympia classic physique, but also to show you guys way more about my life, better content on YouTube. And as you've been seeing the last couple of weeks, the content on YouTube has increased dramatically and it will continue to do so. This arrangement allows me more time to show you guys exactly what it's like in my own life to prep for the Olympia and the other shows to qualify for the Olympia. And to me, that's all I've been wanting to do uh, ever since I started this Vintage Genetics YouTube channel. So because of your support, things like this are possible, guys. And uh, really thank you a whole lot for your golden continued support. And uh, this is just the beginning. A lot more is gonna come. Think about collaborations. Think about even more high quality, you know, behind the scenes footage, going to contests and actually trying to actually get backstage, higher quality stage footage itself, etc., which I wasn't able to do back then before, but now things have opened up and we have to step into the direction which I believe is best to support my life and at the same time provide you guys with quality content. So anyway, the pre-workout has pretty much kicked in. I can feel the better alanine rushing through my veins and it's time to actually go downstairs and do the first exercise. All right, guys, we are now downstairs at the main gym floor. And it's time to get started with the arm. So the first movement is going to be the rope tricep push down. And to me, this is the only logical way to start an arm workout for me personally. The triceps are a weak point, so you want to put all your you know, prioritization into the triceps as the first movement. But at the same time, you have to warm up the triceps. So instead of doing a heavy close grip bench press, which would ruin my elbows, honestly, I'm getting started with this getting a good pump in the triceps and you can train arms in two ways. You can either do triceps all at once and then biceps all at once or do a tricep movement and then a bicep movement, which causes, in my opinion, a better pump and a better effect. And we're going to be wearing this oversized gym shirt pump cover first. Once we are warmed up, of course, I will show the stay golden stringer, which I just showed you upstairs. Anyway, let's get started. All right, just started with a very light weight and uh, going to increase the weight with increments. And you know, this is partially what you noted in your logbook and partially what you feel like instinctively should be your working weight. So for me, it's around 27 kilos, but could be 
31.5 kilos, which is the next stack on this entire stack. So we will see, but um, as you see right now, the rest time in between warm-ups is very short, especially on an isolation like this. It doesn't require any lung capacity, any you know, form of or demand on oxygen on your entire body. It's literally local fatigue that is minimal when doing a light weight on this tricep extension. Go all the way up, feel the stretch, mind muscle connection, all the way down until you feel the squeeze in the triceps. So at two points in the movement, you wanna feel something distinctive, the stretch and the contraction. Okay, let's make this a working set. So this is 27 kilos. I already feel a nice pump in the triceps just from the warm-ups, which is a very good sign that things are flowing well. That feels good. I think it was around 15 reps. That to me is the minimum that you want uh, with your first working set. You can always go heavier, but to me, the pump you get now is way better than with the heavier weight. And the heavier the weight becomes, the more of the rest of your body is going to be used to stay in balance or to even push the weight. So isolation with arms is key. Acid guys, that's what you want to feel if you train arms. If you don't, something is wrong. That feels good. And now it's time for some biceps. So people underestimate biceps. They think, oh, I'm pretty strong with biceps, but if you happen to use full range of motion all the way down, and don't warm up properly, you can irritate the distal bicep tendon. And when you got that, any back training will be terror. It will be hell. And I've had that, I think last year for a few months. So when you wanna work your back, you have to find certain movements that don't hurt your bicep. That's very annoying. So in order to prevent that, we're gonna start with only the bar. So this is of course, a close grip preacher curl and my uh, index fingers are on this line right here and this allows me to have a constant same grip every single set. So we're going to go all the way down but don't overextend. Go all the way up, feel the contraction and the squeeze. If you don't feel a squeeze here, adjust your body so you actually feel it because if I sit all the way here I don't feel a squeeze because the weight is stacked on my joints, on my forearm. But if I sit more forward, now I have to put tension on the bicep in order to hold the bar here. So put your elbows close together, all the way down, especially all the way up. an arm training you want to maintain a good pump in the arm so once you've done the first movement and you get a good pump you don't want to rest too long because you don't want to lose the pump that should be your main objective during an arm workout but at the same time don't rest for too I mean don't rest for too short because if you do that you won't be able to lift any weight so find a good balance Usually a minute, maybe 90 seconds in between the, uh, the sets is good for arms to maintain a good pump and to rest enough to be able to you know, lift enough weights. Yo. I'm gonna try and put two and a half on here. Damn. 
this one is going to be to fill your as many reps as you can. And uh, yeah, nice and slow controlled reps. That's how you build the biceps, guys. No swing here. So now the working set will actually be two and a half kilos less because then we're able to do, I hope, around 15 reps. And trust me, if I was going to do a heavier weight, I would still be able to do it, but it would not result in bigger biceps. You have to humble yourself with lighter weights in order to build bigger muscles. Sounds counterintuitive, but most examples in bodybuilding that have quality muscle without the injuries will lift lighter weights and actually have the muscles to back up their execution of the movement. As you may notice, I'm not going to absolute failure because there's still a lingering irritation in the background, which I don't want to summon back. I don't want to resurrect something that's evil. So I'm keeping it at bay. Biceps are a strong muscle group anyway, so I don't have to go to absolute failure. If you stay shy of failure with one or two reps, you're still going to build muscle maybe a few percent less, but it saves you a whole lot of pain if you happen to go beyond what you're capable of, which will result in irritation, inflammation, injury, and that's not what we want as a professional bodybuilder. Next movement, kind of another tricep extension which I happen to do for about a few weeks now. I really love it. So it's using individual cables like this, one on each hand. And you really wanna focus here on standing right in the middle, keeping your arms close to you and not too far forward, but actually a little bit to the back because when you go to the back, you get a larger stretch on the long head. But right here, Stretch it out all the way like this. And here you feel an incredible contraction and extension, which is exactly what the triceps are, you know, what they are meant to do. So this feels very good. And right now, as I mentioned before, as I am contracting the triceps, I feel the bicep being stretched. Now that is the unique benefit of training antagonist muscle groups. And pretty much antagonist means, you know, opposites basically. All right, all you need for one warm up, let's increase the weight and do a working set. Fifteen reps here. Oh. 
this one is also uh, a very interesting bicep movement. Looks like the pre curl we just did upstairs, but this one we're gonna just grab its shoulder width and it's going to be literally vertically down against gravity instead of on an angle. And that allows me for an even better peak contraction, less of a stretch, but here we are going for the contraction. So all you wanna do is choose an inclined bench like this. Up, uh, and perform the curl. Mm. Okay, there was one warm up, and let's check out some extra padding below to be higher on the bench. So, if you have a problem with this, I'm quite tall, but even I can't get above this, and you want to be a little above it for a better uh, range of motion. So, Let's add some padding here and uh, continue the sets. It's time for the first warming set. Here I can do a little more weight compared to the preacher curl upstairs because again, the stretch is a little less. Contraction is more, but the irritation usually is at the stretch part. So that is now eliminated. Because, you know, that contraction, that to me, is what biceps is all about, to create that peak. Of course, the stretch is important, which we won't skip, but the contraction, you want to feel that peak contraction. That's to me where it's all about creating those biceps. lesson also you can do partials but a lot of people don't try to do partials they try to force their way into a full rep and that's exactly what you don't want to do all right now it's time for the triceps again and this is going to be an overhead movement which means it's going to target the long head which causes the lower sweep on doing the front double biceps which for me has to always improve to match up with the biceps themselves so the only downfall of this movement is the setup. So I'm gonna do it on a bench, but you have to get on the bench as well. So if you're alone, what you kind of want to do, what I like to do is first already get into the position and then walk where you gotta go. So you don't, and you can't really get from here and grab it all the way down below. So here you can much more easily get into the movement. What you want to do here is go all the way down. Here is actually more about the stretch. You don't want to force a contraction if it's not natural to do so. So just go all the way up until you feel like it's going to be unnatural to move further. And that's all you need to do. It may look like a partial, but guess what? If you would do a full range of motion here, it might actually result in less muscle growth. So focus on the stretch, go all the way up until you can't really go anymore, and then go all the way down again. And this is also a little more difficult. So we're gonna go with uh, one stack heavier, and uh, that's gonna be the working set already.
these Tyron grips really do help. They really allow me to grip this rope properly because I think a normal rope would be a little more challenging on the uh, hands, in my opinion. So this feels, you know, painless, pain-free, pretty much. Ah. As I go down, I can feel literally a stretch as I go down, and that's what you want to feel, guys. If you don't feel that, find a different movement, uh, you know, that looks like this, but actually gives you that feeling, that mind-muscle connection. And this exercise is especially effective after already having done some extensions because then the pump is there and it feels way better. So now we're gonna do one more bicep movement unilaterally because it's the fourth movement. And at least one movement in every arm workout should be a unilateral one to you know, match the balance in between both arms. So let's do uh, you know, a bicep concentration curl starting with the left. All right, so I'm grabbing a dumbbell that's pretty heavy for an isolation movement. And the reason is because the contraction then is under a greater load and I'm able to do this. And at the same time, I don't have to warm up either anymore because I'm already warmed up from the previous movement. So let's see if I can actually do enough reps right now. So I matched the reps in between the left and the right. And uh, since I want to stay around the 15 rep mark, I'm now gonna go two and a half kilos lighter to ensure I keep the volume in the biceps. some uh, dumbbell skull crushers actually. Not really a unilateral movement, but still it's two free weight. So it's two unilaterals at the same time, which makes it a bilateral, but it's a free weight. So it's still one tricep individually that you're training. So we're gonna do this with a light weight, heavy weights, all that it's been doing for me is put more pressure on the joint and not the tricep. So we're really gonna focus on the stretch and the contraction at the top, and uh, that's it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> we don't want a flat one, or even a decline. We want, we want an incline. Ah, that's why you always want to double check your bench. Just imagine this would have been a 70 kilo incline dumbbell press. Would not have gone well. Okay, so if you look at this dumbbell, you want to put your hand close to the top because then you have less space that uh, impedes the range of motion. So, because if you go all the way down, you kind of hit the bench here. So, 
what you want to do is grab the dumbbell in a way that allows you the most depth possible before you're going to touch your shoulders or anything. And then go all the way up, but not really contract super hard here because if you do, you're literally only putting tension on your joints as well. So just like the previous overhead movement, I'm using kind of a partial because I'm focusing on the stretch on the long head and not as much on the you know, contraction part. Oh. Yeah. Only 12 and a half kilos needed to go to failure here. And what I feel is the lactic acid builds up so much that there is no energy left anymore in able to able to um, do another rep. So only a light weight is needed. I know some people do a lot of weight here, but not a lot of them have incredible triceps. So I'm just starting here. And throughout the years, I will get stronger and bigger triceps as an effect. finishing set and um, the reason by the way why with triceps I'm not going heavy is that's what I used to do in the past very heavy French press skull crushers close grip bench press and guess what it resulted in weaker triceps not in strength but in size so what you want to do if you have a weak muscle group the most idiotic thing to do is the exact same as you did before because how then are you going to improve something if you are not changing so I've changed every single muscle group that is a weak point into a workout regimen that is different from what I did before. So from heavy to lighter with more volume, the legs way deeper, more full range of motion, really feeling the, uh, you know, the mind muscle connection when I'm doing uh, a very deep belt squat or a leg press or a hex squat, feel the stretch in the quads, which I never really noticed before back in the back in the day so it's the little things that you have to look for if you have weak muscle groups and that's the best way to you know try to utilize uh, a technique to make sure you do something different compared to before to ensure better connection to the muscle that is a weak point so uh that's a long story for something very simple anyway the workout is finished, and now it's time for the posed workout nutrition. Alrighty, the workout has been completed, and now it is time for the posed workout meal. So, regardless of the muscle group you train, the posed workout meal should contain lots of carbs to regenerate the muscle along with some protein. So, let's check it out. Look at that. So, what we have here is an incredible meal of cream of rice, 160 grams. We have 60 grams of whey through this as well. A little bit of salt, as I showed you before, about that amount. And also a banana to add even more carbs to this meal. So, this is going to be an incredible meal that I'm going to eat very quickly. Yes, the chocolate is there partially for taste, but also it's healthy and it's incredible. Dark chocolate, it's cacao is in there, you know, it's just an amazing addition. But we will lose this addition next week probably because then Stefan, my coach, will send me my plan, which I will, you know, follow religiously. Anyway, let's enjoy this one. 
Thanks a whole lot for watching, guys. That was an incredible post-workout meal. One of the last uh, that I can take in this form before we start prep. Normally in prep, you want the carbs to be even more specialized towards performance and recovery. So the carbs in the post-workout meals during the prep will most likely be cereal. Then one hour later, a regular post-workout meal. But the amount of carbs throughout the day will be less, of course. But the carbs throughout the workout will be maximized as long as possible. Anyway, guys. Thank you a whole lot for watching. If you have anything you want to see on this channel, let me know down below, but I can already tell you a lot more video ideas, content, footage will be shown and recorded for you guys, especially in Condes Prep. I know that I shine way more and uh, yeah, this is just the beginning of a lot of great things. So once again, thank you for a lot for watching. Thanks for the golden support. Don't forget to check out VintageGenetics.com and don't forget to stay golden.